All right. Um, hi, everyone. It's Jen Droblin. I'm with the Creative Arts Unit at Arlington County Parks and Rec. And today we're going to do a landscape painting. Um, we're going to use acrylic today, but this is um, my uh, this is a vertical painting. So I oriented my canvas in a vertical manner. This is 18 by 24. And, um, and we're using the acrylic sets that we use uh, in our classes. So this is the Blick acrylic sets. Um, so I have uh, the Mars black, magenta, titanium white, chrome yellow, and ultramarine blue. And I've uh, placed that on my palette. I'm just using a paper plate for my palette. Um, I like to use the basic colors, the, the three primaries and the two values, the white and black. Um, because you can pretty much get with a mixing set the full range of, of tones and colors. So um, uh, I like to minimize my, my palette that way. So that's why I have just the, um, what the essentials are. I have a couple tools that I'm gonna paint with today. Um, I've got a wide brush, I have a couple sponges. I've got a couple brushes. These are flat brushes. Those are my favorites to work with, but then I also have a nice round brush here. I also have some things I want to scratch into. So um, I've got uh, popsicle sticks, but you can also use a uh, palette knife. I just like to go cheap and um, use popsicle sticks. Plus you get a snack. Yeah. And uh, you've got the, um, I've got some skewers here, which will also work as a, a neat like marking tool. And a glass of water, because remember um, acrylic is uh, polymer based. So you wanna make sure um, you don't dilute things too much unless you're doing a wash because you don't wanna break um, the, uh, the polymer in the, um, in the acrylic paint, um, unless it's intentional. Otherwise you wanna maintain the integrity of the acrylic paint. So try to use less water as possible and really just use your water for, um, for changing and uh, changing uh, colors or um, not for drinking, yeah, but uh, uh, changing colors or having um, uh, something to use in case you're wanting to dilute it a little bit for, for a wash. And that's gonna sort of be our, our first step. So we're gonna look at this picture and you see here, we've got um, this canvas is a little bit toned. It's a little bit gray and that's okay. That's actually gonna work really well with my background here. When you're working with acrylic paint, you wanna work background to foreground. Um, so the color that I have that's in this very background is sort of like this muddled grayish color that kind of works really well um, for the background. So I'm not gonna actually do a whole lot extra um, with this color, except for um, add a little bit more of some definition back here. And then we're gonna attack the middle ground and then the foreground. Um, the great thing about acrylic paint being polymer is that it dries very quickly and that you can, um, you can layer, uh, each layer uh, dries pretty fast, so you can work back to front. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take my, um, my big brush here, and I'm gonna just get it wet a little bit, because I kinda wanna, like I said, break it down a little bit. Add a little bit of water to my white. Add a little bit of blue. And I'm just going to add that to my canvas. It's going to make some noise. Let's see if I could do that without. There we go. And it's still going to do it. So for this back, very back layer, I don't want to spend a lot of time being fancy, but what I do want to do is cover the whole, I want to cover the whole surface. Because what's also great is it's going to unify in the end, when we have stuff over top of it, it's going to unify what's in the foreground. And I kind of want to be a little bit, um, a little bit conscious of the marks that I'm making because once it's that back there and it's dry, where it lays, it stays, right? Unless we push it around a little bit with a, with a sponge, which I think I might end up doing. Sorry for the noise. I'm 
may not look like much, but these little punches of the blue color are gonna kind of stand out the more we get into our painting. It's gonna really give it a sense of depth. Another reason why I like to cover, cover the canvas first is that I kind of like um, taking something that has nothing on it, you know, which is kind of intimidating and covering the surface and getting all of that anxiety of, oh my gosh, it's just this fresh white thing out of the way. You've already attacked it. And now it's just a matter of finishing it. Sometimes when you lay a ground color, um, you can get a lot done just by laying down that ground color. So I'm gonna take my um, paper towel and I'm just gonna sort of soften these areas, kind of mush it together a little bit. Like I said, we got a nice start. And because our trees are vertical, we kind of want to do that with the mark making that we have right now. So I'm going to just kind of use my paper towel and blend this color into the canvas using vertical strokes. Okay, so now we have a cool bluish color and that is our, that's our ground color here. That's our very back background color. And so now what I wanna do is we're going to start to put in this little bit of medium range color. So you could see that there's some trees back there. They're just very barely kind of showing, um, but you can kind of see them. So I wanna add a couple lines of that. And they're gonna be a little bit more of a uh, darker, not too much darker, but I'm gonna use my brush for this. But I'm gonna add a little bit of black to make it gray. And because trees go from the ground up, I'm gonna start from where, let's see, this is about halfway. This, uh, this path is about halfway. So I'm just gonna kind of mark where that is. A little bit of more white. And I'm just going to add a couple lines. Just some little sprouts to kind of identify where these things are. And it's because it's kind of, it's in the background, far in the background, you want to kind of blend it in a little bit because it's, it, you just want to show that something's there. I'm working in this area right here. And there's some that's happening up here. So this time I'm going to use the, the edge that's and just kind of put in a couple little colors there. And it kind of looks like they... So just to kind of identify what's happening back there. Very subtle. And believe it or not, we will have gotten a lot of work done just by doing this because we're gonna let that dry. Oh, now I got my paper wet. Okay. So this is our background and we have a really good start. So now what I wanna do is I want to sort of find this color, this lighter greenish color. And because this canvas is still a little bit wet, it'll mix with um, the green that we're going to add next. So I'm gonna take my sponge this time. I'm gonna get my sponge wet. And don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of that yellow in there and a little bit of blue 
and add some white. And that's a really good tone, I think, for this middle ground here. You can kind of see, it's, like I said, it's very faint. And all I'm gonna do is just dab that in. And it goes all the way up. So I'm just gonna take my sponge and twist my hand so that the marks aren't um, uh, like a pattern. I wanna try to give it a little bit of difference. And I wanna cover all of that because we're going to get into We're going to get into those trees and again I'm using a little bit of water to get that same tone and because like I said you've got the blue in the background it's going to mix it's going to mix really well with and because this color comes forward we're going to go ahead and build that up because that that blue disappears. And because it's part of the path here, I'm just gonna do that. And all the way up. And you see how I'm just kind of uh, letting the, um, letting the thin layer do the work of mixing. It mixes the color for me. So there's, there's a couple little things happening over here. And again, because we, that color blue disappears in the foreground doesn't hurt to cover it. There's some of it in here too. So I'm just gonna, there are some like little dabs of white in the path. So I'm gonna try to incorporate those in. And then I'm gonna take and get a little bit more yellow because there's yellow right at that base of that path. And it gets more and more yellow as we go in here, this area. So I didn't add too much more other than a little bit more yellow. like there's a little bit of that up top here too. Okay. Doesn't look like much, but we did a whole lot right now because everything else is going to be um, all the lights are here for us. Now all we have to do is put in the darks. So, okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit more green. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to my yellow. And we've got a nice little color here to work with. And again, I'm adding a little bit of water to kind of make it a little bit more um, trans transparent. We want a nice transparent layer. And again, I'm just dabbing the color. Where I see those, where I see that dark color. And it looks like it comes down. And again, I'm kind of varying my, my blotting.
you can kind of see how the sponge work. How nice that looks as foliage. Just a little bit more up here. Remember, this is just the stuff that we're playing with to start. So have fun with this, this part of the painting. Because it's going to get a little bit darker. Uh, while we have, while we've got some things going on here, we're going to get a little greener, but I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So to make brown, super simple, you actually just mix the three primaries together. So the red, yellow, and the blue until you get a color that you like. And I actually really like this color right now, so I'm not going to do too much more. And I'm just going to kind of dab this in to give sort of a sense of this path that's in front. And again, using light. Just light, um, light sponge marks. And oh. I need to uh, take it off the easel to get that bottom part. Let's see if I can do that easily without making a lot of noise. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill that in. It's a little bit red, but that's okay. We're gonna cool it down in a bit. Yeah, looks like we got a little bit of that there. Okay. That kind of gives us a little bit of idea where things go. Kind of spread that in a little. And there's some of that color in the background. So I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of some attention here. This is going to get much darker. And then there's some of that in here as well. Again, barely just adding color. So it's a little bit of a dry sponge. And it's a little bit warm, but we're going to make that work in our next swipe. Some of that going on right there. Oops. Okay. All right. Uh, another thing we got going on is this tree, this tree trunk. So once we lay that in there, and we're just going to use the same color right now of what we just laid, but I'm going to use it with a little bit less water. And with trees, let's see, this tree is probably about here. Okay. Um, you want to do the trunk of the tree and you're going to use a little bit of like a wiggle, a wiggle motion. So again, yeah, making, adding the brown, a little bit of black. And we're just going to kind of wiggle this up. We're at Walter Reed right now, in case you're wondering. 
in the pretty multi-purpose room space which is open to the public. So you see here, I'm just kind of wiggling this up. This is my flat brush here. And I'm giving it sort of my sense of my tray here. giving it some some life there and a little bit of a frame for what we're going to do next. And then this color gets darker over here. So we're going to make sure we include that because this is going to get much darker. And again, just starting uh, up. Give us a sense of where these trees are. And I want you to have fun with this because it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to just kind of in, sort of wiggle as you go up. It should get a little smaller and you should be lifting your paintbrush up a little bit off the surface as you go up. And there's quite a few of these, so. And there's some that even come across like so. And this tree has got a little bit of a, a friend here. It gives us a hint of where things are. And we're gonna darken that up, but right now we just wanna make sure that things are in place so that we have a sense of space. Okay. While that's drying, we're going to go over another layer, and this time we're going to go in with a little bit more of an intense green. So I'm going to mix the blue and the yellow together. And I'm just going to find where some of this darker green is. And just kind of, I'm kind of mushing my brush, my flat brush in a way so that it kind of looks like I'm going back and forth to the left and then to the right. So brush up and then brush down. And again, because that gets darker, we can go ahead and add that color on top. And that's going to help us all the way here too. So there's some lighter areas. We're going to leave those alone. But we kind of want to give a sense that there's a lot going on in this. In this foliage here. That's pretty yellow over here. And because they go back in space, our brush, our brush work is going to get smaller. So we're going to just it needs to be a little bit more brown. We'll figure that out. Oops. There's no, there's no messing this up. So 
So try to find like the really light yellow, green colors in your background. And again, I'm just kind of twisting my brush where I kind of see some of these lighter colors come through. going on up here too. Remember, don't cover over that blue, that original blue color, because that is like the special stuff in the background that's gonna help give it the definition. I got some things going in front. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so this is a good, I would say a good start. <laughs> but we've got a lot we're gonna do still. So this brownish, this, um, this greenish color, we can incorporate a little bit more of the red um, and make sort of these background things happen too. I forgot about these little sprouts here that we could kind of see. some of that happening here too. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna to start to lay in the, the really, um, uh, the important parts of this picture. So right now I feel like we have our groundwork done and now it's just a matter of adding the marks that are going to really make this painting work. So first off, let me do this. I want to lighten this up. I want to sort of show some of these lighter areas. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got this color kind of already mixed, this brown, red, yellow, blue. And I need to put in some of this contrast here. And because it's um, because these are plants and they kind of go in um, horizontally, I want to kind of match my work to that. into this a little bit. Oh, I just added a little bit of black, but I'll make that work too. If you add a little bit of black, it does make a big difference, right? But just look at that. That goes into the tree. So you see, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush around to just get those darks in. And I'm also working in a horizontal way because the ground is flat. But it's not perfectly flat, right? It's got some bumps and rocks and things. So I wanna incorporate that. And the beauty of acrylic, like I said, is that you can easily paint over it. So if you make a mistake, don't worry, just let it dry and you can continue on. Okay. I'm gonna continue with this dark color because it's helping to sort of frame this picture a little bit. And I kind of want to add some of the darker tree here. 
So what I'm working to do is I'm kind of getting that line a little bit darker. And it kind of disappears. And it gets a little even darker that way. Uh, same thing on this side. Leaving some of the brown to kind of work as the highlight and give it a little bit more definition. It gets really dark down that corner, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that in real quick. Yeah, it gets dark in that corner. I'm looking at this area right here. And because that color, at this point, I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush. So it's kind of a dry brush right now, but that's gonna help to kind of soften the, the color as it goes up. And And we're just going to keep adding to that. So I have that brown already made, um, but I want to kind of go the other direction with it. So I'm going to pull some white, a little bit of that color. And I kind of want to get my path here because it's so light in this one area. Right there. And again, I'm just kind of peppering that in. And you can even use your finger to, to blend it. And it gets a little bit more pink as we go down. So add a little bit more red. helping a lot here. I'm going to do a layer over top of that too. So, and then we've got a little bit of, I'm going to make that a little bit more yellow because in this area, while they're the trees, we've got some, we've got some color here. And this comes in front. I'm just dabbing that in. Okay. And there's some of that up here too. Okay. So you see adding the contrast really helps, it makes a big difference. So now I've got this round brush with a really sharp tip and I want to sort of put in some of these additional, actually, you know what, let's do one thing first. Forget what I said, reverse it. Let's do a little bit of a bright green. This is just blue and yellow together. We could start to add some of the really dark. I just added a little bit of water to make it a little bit a little bit softer, the paint a little softer, so it'll lay on a little easier. And I'm gonna take my little round brush here, 
and I'm going to paint in, I'm just going to do little splotches of these leaves. And there's And because I added a little bit of water, we're going to have some range of definition in the in the mark itself. And of course that one comes up like that. And there's one, a couple that come in front. And then these guys are like little dabs. You know, we're trying to make it so that the paint lays on pretty easily. And again, just using little wispy marks. And then as we get down, it gets a little bit brighter, but we're going to focus on just this color, this color where the, the leaves come forward. And some of these branches here, well, I'm going to do that with the uh, popsicle stick, so don't worry about that. But there's some areas here where you can see it's just a little bit darker. So I want to plug those in. See, just by using light layers, how much range of tone you can get. starting to come together now. We've got some of this color up top. And again, it doesn't have to be fully defined. Because if you just make little marks and kind of blend a little bit, it's going to come together. The illusion is going to work. down almost like a frame right so make that brush work for you I get a little bit more green as we come over here and you also have that under color that peeks through and that's what we really want to see. And of course, that's going to get darker too. So I'm over on this side. But because we've got a nice, we've added a little bit of water, it's going to help to make everything blend. I'm not going to paint in that little fence. You're welcome to paint that fence in, but I'm going to leave it alone just for the sake of time. But I hope that's one detail you include in your painting. Okay. All right, so now this is the fun part. Um, I want to add a little bit more of this, um, the contrast, right? And there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, so I'm going to use a popsicle stick because that's just going to be a really easy way of um, making these tree branches. 
Uh, so I'm going to mix that brown again, a little bit of a dark. Remember, it's yellow, blue, and red. And where some of these darker, I'm just going to paint this popsicle stick. And what's cool is you can just stamp it. So you just stamp. Just like so. And then you can blend it together. This canvas is a little too rough. Let me try. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, friends. Can't tell you how many of those videos that I do where I drop stuff happens all the time. And people who know me know that about me. So you see, I'm just kind of adding some dark. And when you do that, then you can follow it up with your brush and just kind of extend that line. And that's gonna give you the illusion of some branches in the background. So where you see the, the blobs, just kind of add to it. And this guy needs a little bit more of a definition. Because there's a lot of trees back there, don't be afraid to incorporate that. Uh, let's go back here. At this point, you should be in the zone, okay? We always talk about the zone, but this is the part where you should be having fun. You did the bones, right? You put in this, the skeletal structure and now this is the fun part. This is the part where you, you've, you've gotten yourself to a place where you, um, you identify this picture, right? You can see it, you, you have a path, you have a vision. And now it's just a matter of making that vision work. So you see how I'm just kind of playing with adding and I'm just gonna rinse and then I just extend that line. Make it go in a couple different directions. Just to make it appear a little bit more real. And so we got some of this action here. So I kind of want to give this guy some more shape. And I do that by just like going down the, the tree and adding little bumps. Now what's great is we've got this color, this base color, kind of be a little bit over, a little over, all over the place right now. Because right now there's things that are drying and I want to take advantage of the time that we've got. So I'm going to take a sponge, get it wet. This is just a natural sponge. You can buy, you can buy um, soap sponges at the Dollar Tree. You can also buy natural sponges there. Um, in the bath section, and you just tear this up and it gives you a really cool effect. So I'm gonna mix a color and I'll show you what happens here when I just mix a bright color. Just enough to, 
a little bit more of a white. A little white, there we go, that's what I wanted. So I mixed that green and then I just added a little bit more white. And you can take that sponge and press it into the paint. And then you can just blot that. And see so you're getting, the more varied marks you make, the more the, the, the tree will come together, right? Look at how that just makes it look more real. Because you have that background in place, it all kind of works together. And even in this, this ground color where the gravel is, we're gonna make that work too. But you see, I'm just taking and making marks here, letting the paint and the sponge do the work for you. See how much of a difference that makes? And I just put a little bit in the yellow too. You see that, that blue is peeking through and that really makes a difference too, right? Okay. And then because we've got some light stuff in the front, I'm gonna add a little bit more white. Over here, we got some little bit of a light going on. And we're just gonna add a little bit of that here. All right, and as I said before, there's some parts of the path that we can also incorporate using the sponge. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red to that color to make it a little bit more of a brown, muddy color. Make sure it's well incorporated on the sponge. And I'm just gonna put that in the front too. But this time, you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of like dragging it. So I'm playing it down and I'm dragging it. And that will just add a little bit more of the energy to our pathway. Like so. And we've got some really dark green. So with that, I'm just gonna add more blue. So I'm not even doing anything extra other than adding more blue to that brown brownie mixture, adding a little bit more black, a little more yellow. And that's gonna give us what we need in the front. I'm gonna squish this together a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more black there. And again, it's it's a dab and drag kind of situation. Okay. 
All right. So final touches as we go. There's a couple things we can do. Um, we need to do some of this connecting between the, um, we need to add some lines. So what I want to do is I want to flatten, flatten my brush. And again, you can use a popsicle stick. You can even use a dowel rod, which is even kind of fun too. You can just show, I can show you what that looks like. And a little bit more paint. Oh. This canvas doesn't want to be cooperative, <laughs> but we got that. And then we got this one that's coming down. Oop, didn't mean to break it either. And that's what I just did. So you can add in, there's got the dowel rod here. Now, of course you can do this all very manually with a smaller brush if you want to, but I like to cheat. Actually, I take that back. There's no cheating in painting. There's only hacks. And these are all good hacks. Not as bendy as I want it to be. But see, then you can start to incorporate. You're not gonna break the canvas if you press on it. So don't worry about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my brush. This is my uh, round brush that has the nice tip. And again, I'm just gonna sort of extend this and break these up. Oh, too much. You got an issue, just blend it in. Dang it. This guy's a little bit darker, so I'm gonna define him a little bit more. Again, just kind of adding, adding a little bit extra. You know, there's ground down there and it's very dark. So I'm gonna make sure we darken that up. We have some of this area here, it's kind of dark too. I just make sure I'm connecting some of these dots here. And there's a little bit of a light. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, this area here. I want to clean that up a little bit. Now that we've got that background established, I'm going back to that light blue that we started with. I'm going to just clean up some of these lines. So it looks a little bit more like there's wavy trees back there and stuff happening. It also gives you an opportunity to rethink, oops, 
not that. I'm just gonna if you do it quickly enough, you can get rid of that. But I think, to be honest, I kind of like that light color because that light color is just some stuff happening back here. So I'm gonna actually gonna make that work. Let's try that. There's a little bit of light. I'm just gonna blend that in a little bit. Because we know something's happening back there. And we'll go some of that color in too. I'm just using my fingers for this part. I kind of want to add, because there is a light area here before it gets really green. I have that dissolve a little bit in the background. I'm just going to take a little bit of a water wash and soften that up. Take a sponge and just kind of wipe it. It's a little bit of a unifier. I like that. Okay. And we've got this little bit of a gray. Ooh. Oh! A little bit of a gray. <laughs> just like that. And it kind of comes down. So now it's just the fun extra bits that we want to do. Going to show what's going on here. It's back in space. Then you've got a tree that kind of comes up. A couple trees, actually. And. Continue back on to our that a really nice brown. Let's see if we can get that back. a little bit on the tree there. So it gets dark there. I'm gonna have to make sure I put that back in. So in the couple minutes that we have left, we just really want to tighten up what's going on with these branches. So we want to tighten up some of these. I'm using a smaller brush now. And like I said, you know, it's one of those things where use your fingers. Don't be afraid of using your fingers. we can get some nice nice definition with some of our branches here
Got some kind of little twigs here. But this is the joy of the painting right now, is like I said, just trying to find these trees and then making, making them fit in this space. So you wanna incorporate a lot of these little guys. I'm realizing this is a little bit darker. This guy, this is a top is also very dark. And again, these guys, there's some that are back here. Oh, and make that green. So that can be like, there we go. Just varying your brush stroke a little. I'm adding a little bit of bridges between these dots. And not getting rid of all of that blue because that's all the good stuff right there. Right. And I think the very last thing I want to do is because the focal point is here, I kind of want to tighten that up just a, just a tad. So that's a light blue with a little bit of yellow. It's going to go in the background there. Just kind of pepper that in a little bit in some of these other areas. It's going to give a hint that stuff is happening, but there's light. And 
this guy. Oop. Oop. <laughs> oh no. Now I done did it now. Let's see. To clean them up mistake, just use some wet paper towel and voila, it's gone. But I want to find that again because that's a nice little part of the path. That's good right there. And you got a little bit of some color there. Okay, I think we're at a good place to stop. So I just want to say thank you for joining me today. And I could work on this painting all day, so I hope you choose to do that too. And we'll see you next time. Bye.